was a year of thrills and excitement, and a year that saw the emergence of bright new stars, many of whom will return in 1970. Now let's look at some of the plays and the players who made 1969 a year to remember. Opening the conference race, Texas Tech launches to Cotton Spire of Texas before a capacity crowd of 65,000 at Austin. Texas' first touchdown comes on this triple option pitch and some neat maneuvering by junior Billy Dale. Early in the second quarter, quarterback James Street hums one to Spire. Left halfback Jim Bertelson runs a counter play to make it 14 to nothing. Watch the right halfback, 212 pound flash Ted Coy performs magic for 42 yards. Jim Bertelson blocking. Now the steers lead 21 to nothing. Then this dazzling punt return by Spire. Fifty-three yards before the saving tackle by Jess Richardson. Just before intermission, Joe Madelich is pressured by Bill Zapalak, and the misguided missile is skyjacked by Mike Campbell to give Texas a 28 to nothing halftime lead. Twin brother Tom Campbell gets his own interception now. Sophomore quarterback Charles Knapper eludes Big Bill Atessas, but Campbell burgles the hurried pass. The moonlight stride of Paul Robichaux follows a Terry Collins block to Royal Soil, and Texas goes on to a 49-7 victory. The TCU Horned Frogs invade Razorback country. Arkansas's Cary Stockdell gets away a 70-yard career punt, out of bounds at the TCU 3. Texas Christian sophomore sensation Steve Judy wings one to Jerry Miller, who's collared after a 40-yard gain. After a TCU field goal, the aroused Arkansans strike back as super cool Bill Montgomery lays one on Chuck Dykus. 78 yards, score 7-3. Bill McClard, who tied with Happy Feller for 10th in national kick scoring, powers a 38-yard three-pointer. After another frog field goal made it 10-6, conference rushing champion Bill Burnett got 22 of his season's 900 yards. The junior combination of Montgomery and Dykus produces another touchdown, and it's 17-6. Tight end Pat Morrison and fullback Bruce Maxwell provide key blocks, and Burnett's touchdown gives Arkansas a 24-6 win. A windy night in Dallas. Steve Judy hits Sammy Rabb on a banana root. The Super Soft broke TCU season records for passing yardage and completions. This was the longest pass play in Frog Annals. Lindsey Cole carrying the mail. After a TCU field goal, SNU fights back as 175-pound fullback Darrell Doggett gashes the Frog line. Another sophomore whiz, Gary Hammond, turns the bend and it's TCU 10, SNU 7. Quarterback Steve Judy shows he can run when he has to. Steve spots a seam in the Pony Anti-Aircraft Unit, and Cole's second TD puts Fred Taylor's Frogs out front 17 to 7. 
then defending national passing champion Chuck Hickson addresses one to Gary Hammond, one of 51 receptions that gave him the conference receiving crown. A Mustang field goal made it 17-10. Then SNU marched 72 yards, Gordon Gilder acquiring the final 25 and the touchdown. But TCU blocked the extra point to hold a 17-16 lead. SNU coach Hayden Fry calls on Chipper Johnson, whose toe propels the Steeds to a 19-17 win. Bill Beal's Baylor Bears entertain Arkansas on a warm October evening in Waco. Arkansas junior Bill Burnett shows the power and finesse that made him one of the nation's top runners. Burnett was also the conference scoring champion and ranked third in the nation. He puts the Porkers ahead 7-0. The Bruins strike back in the second stanza. Gordon Utgard, runner-up in national kickoff returns, finds Moonlight for eight yards. Then he plunges into a sea of muscle to tie the game. Bill Montgomery dials Dykus again for 48 yards to the Bear 2 to set up Burnett's second touchdown. From the Baylor 3, watch Burnett's sensational ability to find the end zone. Arkansas wins 21-7. That same night at Lubbock, the Red Raiders and the Aggies battled, with Tech moving to a 3-0 halftime lead. In the third quarter, Tech calls on the size six shoe of Jerry Don Sanders for his second field goal and a 6-0 lead. The Aggies retaliate. Tailback Larry Steejan hips and rips for 10 yards. And then sophomore quarterback Rocky Self wheels 12 yards to score. But the cadets missed the point after, and the board reads 6-6. Six to six. Trailing 9-6 to six in the fourth fourth, the Raiders bounce back as Danny Hardaway tears off three yards. With a minute to play, Hardaway scores on his sixth consecutive stab at the Aggie defense. J.T. King's Raiders win 13-9. Against the Aggies, TCU's Marty Whalen finds a muscle gap for 12 yards. Steve Judy has another big passing day. His first completion is to Jerry Miller for 29 yards to the Aggie 10. Then with wedge blocking, Judy opens scoring on a quarterback sneak. Lindsey Cole's catch gives the Frogs a 13-0 lead at the break. A TCU field goal sends the Frogs into the concluding quarter with a 16-0 lead. Rocky Self pegs one to Mark Black, who makes the catch for 18 yards. From the purple 15, Self connects with Ross Brubacker on a flat pass, and it's 16-6. The Aggies need a two-point conversion. Self evades the hatless Bob Creech. But the Frogs protect their goal, and TCU goes on to win 16-6. As the season makes the turn into November, Rice invades Texas Tech. The Owls score first as Staley Vincent zeroes in on Joe Henderson, 7-0. From Tex 17 in the second quarter, sophomore Vincent sheds tacklers for the tally that projects Rice to a 14 to nothing lead. Fighting the clock and the flock, Joe Matlich burns one to David May on a curl route. He survives the meat grinder at the six. One second left in the half, Danny Hardaway reaches Endsville and it's Rice 14, Tech seven. Matalich backspaces. 230 pound Charles Evans puts it in the bank for a 14 yard gain. Then Jimmy Bennett, grandson of Tech's first football captain, ties the score. The Raiders take the lead. 
as Matalich guns a 14-yard shot to Johnny Odom, and Texas Tech goes on to a 24-14 victory. At Rice Stadium, the Owls kick off to Razorback Bill Burnett, who comes out of the chute for another 100-yard-plus day. With Rice trailing 3-0 in the second period, Staley Vincent escapes a wave of Arkansas muscle, finds higher ground, and floats one to Mike Spruill for 34 yards. Four plays later, a Rice field goal ties the game at 3 all. Now watch the bottom of the screen for blocks by tight end Pat Morrison and fullback Bruce Maxwell. They provide an escape route for Bill Burnett, himself one of the most accomplished escape artists. At the Owl 19, Bill Montgomery launches another missile to Chuck Dykus. Burnett does his thing, and Arkansas leads 10-3 before a Rice field goal makes it 10-6. A picture book pass play, Montgomery takes seven steps back in the pocket, reads the coverage, and releases to All-American Dykus at the Rice 30. On the Owl 14, Bill gets key blocks from All-America center Rod Brand and from Maxwell, and has John Reese in the end zone for a 17-6 lead. Later in the third stanza, the handback trap to Russ Garber works for 18 yards. This touchdown by Bill Burnett, plus a later one by John Eichler, gave Frank Broyles Porkers a 30-6 victory over Rice. At College Station, a crackback block by Barney Harris helps Rocky Self pick up a dozen yards against SMU. Ignoring SMU's 240-pound Bill Wright, Rocky pegs to Ross Brubacker for six points. Chuck Hickson pops Gordon Gilder, and Gordon's cool moves take him to the four. Gilder strains for the goal but the ball is dislodged, and opportunistic Vicky Lesser recovers to even the game. But the Aggies are not to be denied on this day. Self finds Jimmy Adams on an out pattern to set up a touchdown. Tailback Larry Steegen flies to a 14-7 advantage. Barney Harris became the most prolific receiver in A&M history. This fourth quarter catch set up the clinching touchdown. Sophomore Steve Burke's 37-yard trek closed the scoring. Gene Stallings Aggies 20, SMU 10. The following week at Waco, Baylor junior Randy Cooper storms for 17 yards against Southern Methodist. But the SMU defense contains and Terry Cosby boots a 52-yard field goal, longest in Baylor history. The leading interceptor in the league with seven purloined passes was Mustang sophomore Pat Curry, number 24. Diminutive Darrell Doggett, second in conference rushing, closed his collegiate career with a 151-yard day. Hammond, usually on the receiving end, shows versatility as he passes to Sam Holden for 40 yards to the Baylor Five. Then Chuck and Chuck Hickson reverses his usual role to give SMU a 7-3 advantage. In only two seasons, he has broken conference career records for completions, attempts, and yards passing. From the same spot as Cosby's 52-yard goal, Chipper Johnson's foot duplicates the feat. SMU ahead, 10-3. Down 10-6, and facing fourth down at the seven, Baylor strategists elect to take an intentional safety, making the score 12-6. On the ensuing free kick, national punting champion Ed Marsh kicks 62 yards into a stiff wind. Four plays later, Baylor forces SMU to punt. 
Needing seven points to win, Steve Stewart and Don Huggins lead a valiant Baylor drive. But SMU holds and wins 12 to six. Turkey Day at Aggieland, Texas deception and blocking, plus the quickness of Jim Bertelson gives the Horns another early lead. Bertelson was third in conference rushing and second in league scoring in his yearling year. Steve Wooster, number 30, erupts for 21 yards. The national rushing champions work their inside belly play for 10 to A&M's 14. And All-American Wooster funnels through for a 13-0 lead. Using All-America left tackle Bobby Wunsch's block, Wooster shifts into reverse for the next touchdown. Tom Campbell intercepted six passes in 1969, returning this one 30 yards to A&M's four. The outside phase of Texas' famed three-way option provides the fifth touchdown. Bertelson scores. All-American Spire starts an option reverse, then throws the home run pass to Randy Peschel, who's destined to catch an even bigger bomb the following week. Mike De Niro, number 89, blocked a steer punt, and Jim Piper scored with it. Final, Texas 49, Texas A&M 12. It's the 50th meeting of Baylor and Rice. Philip Wood lofts a throwback pass to Kim Malone for 35 yards. Later, from midfield, Wood glides 48 yards. Then John Miller curbs it. Larry Caldwell slants in, and Bo Hagen's Owls take the lead. Baylor intercepts. Then David Stockwell recovers for Rice. Sophomore Mike Spruill gets the Owls' second counter. Baylor stays alive with the marksmanship of Steve Stewart to Ted Gillum for 14. And then a look in to Rollin Hunter for the payoff. Slot back Dale Bernauer gets in the scoring column, and later Spruill makes his third TD of the day as Rice triumphs 34 to 6. In the Ozarks, the battle of the century, undefeated number one and undefeated number two before President Nixon, national television, and worldwide radio via the Humble Network. A minute and a half into the spectacle, Bill a 7-0 lead as the Porkers go for their 16th straight victory. After a third quarter fumble by Texas, Montgomery looks, but the Longhorns flush him from the nest. He gains 18 to the Texas 31. Touchdown coming up. Montgomery looks for Dykus. He's got it. And Arkansas is ahead 14 to nothing. Opening the fourth quarter. James Street is forced to run with blocks from Bobby Wunsch, Bobby Mitchell, all-American Bob McKay and Cotton Spire, he waltzes 42 yards to score. Then Streak goes for two on the counter option, and it's 14 to eight. Arkansas threatens as Montgomery aims for Chuck Dykus, but Danny Lester makes a big steal for Texas. on this play by All-American Cliff Powell, the Arkansas defense stiffens. Now, fourth and three of the Texas 43. 
Wooster drives, but no, Texas, incredibly, is throwing the bomb. 44 yards downfield, Randy Peschel has it at the Arkansas 13. Then Ted Coy makes a great run to the Razorback 2. The left side of the Texas line carves a hole. Jim Bertelson slithers in, and the score is tied 14 and 14. Happy Feller makes his point, and Texas leads 15 to 14. It's not over yet. Montgomery completes five quick passes, but suddenly Tom Campbell intercepts. The Arkansas dream is shattered, and Texas wins. But both teams and all of college football were honored as the President of the United States visited each dressing room. Great honor in the hundredth year of football. I also want to say that having seen this game, what convinced me that Texas deserves that is the fact that you want a tough one for a team to be behind 14 to nothing and then not to lose its cool and to go on to win. That proves you deserve to be number one and that's what you are. Yeah. In mid-December, the second annual Kern Tips Memorial Trophy was presented to Buster Adamy, Texas A&M linebacker, by Randall Meyer, humble vice president and director, as coach Gene Stallings looks on. Adamy, listed in the collegiate who's who, won over senior nominees from the seven other Southwest Conference schools. Adamy wore number 60 with distinction on the gridiron, and he was equally distinguished for his academic achievement and outstanding sportsmanship. The 1970 Cotton Bowl, the glamour bowl of college football's centennial year. Texas, seeking its 500th victory and its second national championship under Darrell Royal, meets Notre Dame in the Irish first bowl appearance in 45 years. Leading 3-0 in the second quarter, Notre Dame's nifty quarterback, Joe Theismann, connects with Tom Gatewood on a 54-yard touchdown production. Notre Dame 10, Texas nothing. Texas mounts a 74-yard drive with Bertelson sweeping up 17 yards. And crashing in for the Steers' first score. Irish 10, Horns 7. The hitting was ferocious. Here's a tackle by Notre Dame linebacker Bob Olson, voted defensive player of the game. Notre Dame led 10-7 at the half. Steve Wooster ran for 155 yards and was voted offensive player of the game. After a scoreless third period, Ted Coy packed the pigskin in and Texas went ahead 14 to 10. Midway in the fourth quarter, the Phantom Theismann, who completed 17 of 27 passes, unveiled a fantastic touchdown play. Jim Yoder's reception put the Irish ahead again, 17 to 14. Two minutes to go, Texas ball, fourth down. James Street, never beaten in 20 games as Texas starting quarterback, directs a do or die pass to Cotton Spire. With a minute to play, Billy Dale careens in to give Texas a 21 to 17 victory. It's 20th straight win and the national championship. And that's the story for 1969. Now, a look at some of the 69 stars who will be back in 70. Jim Bertelson of Texas, averaged seven yards per carry. Steve Wooster of Texas, All-American. Cotton Spire of Texas, All-American. Number 77, 260-pound Bill Atessas of the Longhorns. Bill Montgomery has led Arkansas to 19 victories in two years. Chuck Dykus, All-American, Arkansas. Bill Burnett, Southwest Conference rushing and scoring champion. SMU's Chuck Hickson, 1968 champion, 1969 runner-up in national passing. 
Gary Hammond of SMU, nationally ranked in kickoff returns and receiving. Number 85, Ken Fleming of SMU, fourth on the all-time conference receiving list. Charles Knapper of Texas Tech, 900 yards passing as a sophomore. Number 44, Danny Hardaway, the Red Raiders' leading rusher. Steve Judy of TCU, 16th in national passing as a sophomore. Center John Ruthstrom of TCU, 230 pounds of guided muscle. Defensive ace Dave Elmendorf of Texas A&M, five interceptions in 1969. Number 42, Steve Burks of the Aggies. He has 9-8 speed. Ed Marsh of Baylor, defending national putting champion. Randy Cooper, thundering fullback from Baylor. Number 12, Staley Vincent, quarterback from Rice. And Philip Wood of Rice, a two-way threat. All these, plus many other returning stars and a sensational crop from the freshman ranks, promise a thrill-filled season in 1970. Pigskin action at its best as the Southwest Conference begins collegiate football's second century. So get your tickets early and go to the games with Humboldt.